Shalom, Boka Tov. Hi, I'm David Kornblum, and welcome to the ministry through Jewish eyes. Today, before I get started, family, what I'd like to do is just give a few reminders that we do meet every second and fourth Saturday of the month via Facebook Live, such as we are today at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And we also do on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, a Shabbat candle lighting, also a Torah portion on Zoom. And the Zoom numbers for that and information for that should be posted on this page down below. So please, family, people, invite your friends, family, neighbors, invite everybody so we could come together as one to honor and worship God on the Sabbath, on the Shabbos, on the Shabbat. And for every one of you out there that are interested in receiving through Jewish Eyes newsletter, or you just want to find out more about this ministry, who we are, um, and also, or you want to help um, support this ministry any way you can, go to through jewisheyes.org. Again, that is through jewisheyes.org. You know, because of all the letters, uh, the emails, and the messages that I do get, I like to dedicate this message to those who are being called legalistic, Judaizers, being talked about, yented, gossiping, you know, people that you know, that you might go to temple, well not, well, not temple, where you might go to church with, or people just at your job that talk behind your back about the things that you're doing, saying you're part of a cult. Really? Really? Part of a cult? Really? <laughs> Basically, being persecuted for keeping the Sabbath. All the holy commanded days, eating kosher, that is, eating kosher is what the Bible says, eating what God considers food, and doing exactly what Yeshua says and taught. <laughs> exactly what Yeshua says and taught. You know, one of the things that I hear the most is that Paul says that the law is done away with, you know, that we don't have to do it anymore. It's done away with. And usually they reference Romans or Galatians. And for those of you who uh, want to know more about Romans and Galatians on, on the true translation or, you know, in the context of which those books are written in, uh, go to the videos that I have on this page. You can go to the videos to search that out. I have instructional videos there. Or you go to YouTube or the uh, website, the Jewish Eyes website, to, to help you with Romans and Galatians. But if you read those books co correctly, you'll notice that it is furthest from the truth that Shaul never taught against not keeping the uh, commandments, God's commandments. And to give you just one little reference before I go any further, if you go to uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 4, where it says um, that, you know, Yeshua was the end of the law, or Christ is the end of the law, or Jesus is the end of the law. Well, if you actually look at the oldest manuscripts, if you look at the Greek, if just to go to the Greek, you'll see the word telos instead of end. And it actually means the point and the goal. So if you put the proper interpretation there, that Jesus, Yeshua, or the Messiah, or Christ is the goal and the point of the Torah. So yeah, it's like having a goal. You know, what is your goal? What is the point? Of course, he came to teach and fulfill, but I am going to get with, get with that. Um, and also, Peter wrote, and, and this is one of the things I'm very happy about, and, and, and I think most people who, who really understand Scripture, you know, the way the context was actually written, will, will agree that when Peter wrote in, uh, in Second Peter, you know, he wrote about Paul's confusion and misinterpretation of his letters. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to read what Peter wrote, Kiefer, what he wrote. He wrote this in 2 Peter 3.16. It says, as in all his letters. Now, hear this out and, I, and stay with me because it, it does get a lot better and you will see where the interpretation is not what people say it is. And I'm going to read it right from the word. So there is no confusion. I love you. Hashem. But 2 Peter says this, 3.16, as in all his letters, they weren't called scripture because remember, the only book that they had was Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, which contained the Torah, the writings and the prophets, okay? So that's the only scriptures that they had that all Yeshua and all his Jewish disciples would teach from. So Kepha writes, Peter writes, 2 Peter 3.16, and I have to commentate. So you understand history. This is why I always say study history, study the time period that these that the books were written in, so you would understand, study the Jewish people. You'll understand 
what's going on a lot better and make things a lot more clearer to you. But 2 Peter 3.16, as in all his letters, Shaul, Paul's letters, he writes about these things in which things are hard to understand, which the unlearned and unstable distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Now, before I go any further, the unlearned and unstable, listen, these are Gentile people who have never read the Tanakh, don't know who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov is. You know, they never set foot in a temple, so they have no idea, no clue, and they're trying to learn something that they've never been schooled on, okay? And, and I got to tell you this, and please hear my heart, family. At the time Second Peter was written, you cannot tell me that Paul's letters were considered scripture one bit. Paul didn't even consider his letters scripture. Do your homework. You'll see what I'm saying is true. Paul didn't even. I'm, I almost can guarantee Paul never had any clue that none of his letters were going to make the, the Bible. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. Many of those and many of the other books and Paul's other weren't even written yet or shared with anybody who was following what Yeshua taught other believers. Okay. And, and, and I want to give you some reference on that, on, on top of that, because, you know, Peter, when Peter wrote that, you know, he was talked about Paul's writings as letters, because that's all they were. They weren't scripture yet. And he was referring to the scripture, which would be the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures. And some of you call it the old Testament. But if you go just as reference to this, Matt the Yahoo, and listen, folks, you know, I, I always read and I go to these, these, these Bible verses because you can't run from them, especially when, when Yeshua is speaking. He says this in Matthew, Matthew Yahoo, chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth pass away, not one of the smallest letters of the stroke will pass from the law until everything takes place. Now, you know, I said this last night during Shabbos. You know, I, I love the fact how Yeshua uses these analogies because, you know, if they would have said uh, like a rocket or a plane or like that car shot out, or even to say car, people 2,000 years ago said, what are you talking about? What in the earth? What's a rocket? So look how Yeshua used heaven and earth because he knows it's going to be there. So no matter how long the time period goes where that everybody would understand what he's saying, that it never ends, he's saying until heaven and earth. What a great analogy. That was, that was genius. Baruch Hashem. Of course, Yeshua said it. Hallelujah. But he says, not till heaven and earth pass away, not one of the smallest letters or the stroke of the letter will pass from the Torah, from God's law until everything takes place. Listen, not everything takes place. The Bible doesn't lie. You know, God could do anything, but the Bible doesn't lie. God is a God of order. Baruch Hashem. I love saying that. Order. God is a God. No confusion. Verse 19. So anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and teaches other to do so will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, <clears throat> now folks, listen to this. This is beautiful. Verse 20, for I tell you, unless your righteousness, Baruch Hashem, and remember that word righteousness, because it's going to come up quite a few times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unless your righteousness goes beyond the experts of the Torah, of the law, and the Pharisees, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. And just as another reference to that, my family, um, Mark, I love the book of Mark, and so does one of my friends. Uh, Mark 7, 8, if you ignore God's law, and you, for you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Now, that's Yeshua saying that, and the context that he was saying that in, it wasn't pleasant. He wasn't, he was very upset that the people take their own tradition, man-made tradition, man-made days, man-made everything, and use that and fight for that instead of fighting for what is right. God's commandments, God's holy days, the way God wants us to conduct ourselves and the way God wants us to live. Baruch Hashem and, and to show God love. And I'm going to get into that even further. Okay, so if Paul says that the law was done away with, and I want to get back to this. Now, hear me on this. If Paul says that the, letter, that the law, God's Torah, is done away with, let's see what Paul says, how the Gentiles of the time should conduct themselves. How, and anybody, even some Jews that weren't learned, how they would conduct themselves. Let's see some of Paul's teachings on what Paul was writing. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 26 through 28. And it says, be angry, but do not sin. 
Wait a minute. I could stop right here, but of course I won't. <laughs> but it says, be angry and do not sin. Reference. First, Yoken on 1 John 3, 4 says, sin is breaking. Every sin is breaking the Torah. And I'm going to get, I got a, I got a scripture on that as well. But 1 John 3, 4 says, when you sin, you're breaking the commandments. Because sin is breaking God's commandments. Come on, people. Let's wake up and let's hear what the word of God is saying. And let's not make up our own mythology to something that is not true. Let's follow exactly what the word of God is saying. So, uh, Paul Shaul was saying, be angry, but do not sin. So he's saying, be angry and do not break God's commandments. Sha! Do not break God's commandments. Do not let the sun set on your anger. Verse 27. And do not leave the room for death. Excuse me. And do not leave room for the devil. Key verse 28. The thief must no longer steal, but rather labor, do honest work in his own hands so that he may have something to share with one in need. Oy vey is mirch. So first he's talking about sadaka, which we say in Hebrew is, is helping the people in need. Okay. And that is a commandment, but he's saying the thief must not steal. Well, family, guess what? That is the eighth commandment. What? The eighth commandment. The eighth commandment. I love it. Exodus 20, 15. You shall not steal. Thou shall not steal. Rest my case. No, I don't rest my case yet because I still have more to go. <laughs> okay. First Corinthians 6, 9. This is beautiful. Listen, family, enjoy. Take this word in and put it in your heart. Put it in your mind. Let's, let's, let's eat together. Baruch Hashem. First Corinthians 6, 9. Do not, wait, excuse me. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? What? Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor the male prostitutes or homosexuals. Now, the idolaters, I'm going to get into the rest of that after, but the idolaters, it's the second commandment. He already quoted, he quoted I think, three commandments here from the Torah. Well, the uh, no idolaters, Exodus 20, uh, 3 through 6. The second commandment, and, you know, and uh, adulterers. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. Uh, late, uh, uh, Deuteronomy in the Torah, 22, 22, if a man is found laying with, his wife, with, with another man's wife, both of them shall die. The man who lay with the woman and the woman, you shall purge them, you shall purge the evil from Israel. Look how serious God takes adultery. When you cheat on your husband, when, when, a, woman cheat, when a woman cheats on her husband, when a man cheats on his wife, Listen, don't, don't flirt. Don't even flirt. You're giving the enemy room to move into your heart. Don't even flirt. You want to flirt? Do it with your wife. Baruch Hashem and wives do it with your husband. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Let me just check Facebook and make sure that we are still up and live. Yes, we are. Praise God. I just want to make sure. Um, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says this, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, mediums, discard, hatred, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition. I mean, I could go on here, but look at what he's saying. Those who like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, in verse 21, it says, and the envy, the drunkenness, orgies, and like that, I warn you as I did before. This is Shaul. He's warning you again as he did before. So this is continuous since he came to know Messiah. He says that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Commandments. If you go to the, uh, uh, you could find all the commandments, Exodus 20. Uh, 20, uh, 20, chapter 22 through 17, Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 through 21. Listen, I say righteousness and the kingdom of God. Look, I want to go to here to Matthew for one second before I finish, before I go on with this. Uh, Matthew chapter five. This is, I love the book of Matthew, but look, blessed are those chapter five, verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. What did I say about righteousness? Baruch Hashem, I was just reading it from the word. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Judge, um, Chapter uh, uh, chapter five, verse 11, blessed are you, the men who reveal you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice in me again because your reward is great in heaven. What is Yeshua? What is Yeshua talking about? And he says, and it goes on to say, uh, reward in heaven for the, this manner they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So basically, listen, family, th this persecution, 
just didn't start when Yeshua came. It was already here. Anybody who lived for Torah, who tried to do righteousness, you had Romans. I mean, look at all the people who hated Israel. Even within Israel, you had people who just, you know, had just the spirit of evilness in them. But let's get back. Uh, Leviticus, okay? Uh, Leviticus here is uh, chapter 20, verse 6. When it comes to, uh, what was I saying over here? When it comes to witchcraft, mediums, it says here, Leviticus ch chapter 20, verse 6. If a person turns to mediums and wizards playing the harlot after them, I will set my face against that person and I will cut them off from among his people. Listen, even if somebody predicts something, uh, listen, only God knows the future. Yeshua said he doesn't even know when he comes back. Only the father knows. And he also said, listen, this is not my word. I, 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 I only say what the, what the father tells me. And he also said, any of you who know God's word will know that my teaching doesn't come from me, but it comes from the one who sent me. Oh, I love it. Baruch Hashem. Romans chapter one, verse 26 through 27. For this reason, God gave them up to shameful passion. Even their women exchange, nat uh, exchange natural reflections for what is against nature. Verse 27, likewise, men, the men abandoned natural relations with women and were burning with passion toward one another. Men committing sinful acts with other men. Speaking of homosexuality, please don't shoot the messenger. Don't you? I'm just reading for what the Brit al Shah is saying, the New Testament. And receiving themselves the due penalty for their error. You know, Paul's talking about homosexuality, same-sex marriages, same-sex... Listen, folks, like I say, I love, God loves everybody, but he doesn't like the sin. And if you don't like what I'm saying, please, it's written in the Bible. I can't help it. I got to read the truth and the truth will set you free. Baruch Hashem. Leviticus 18.22. Where did Paul get that from? You shall not lie with a man as one does with a woman. It is abomination unto God. I can't... I'm speechless. <laughs> That, that, that comes right from the word of God. So listen, if Paul was teaching that the Torah was done away with, I'm going to tell you something. That could have surely fooled me that every day. And listen, this is just a handful of scripture that, I, that, that I'm reading to you. I mean, I could go on and on about Paul's teachings about the Torah, but that's just a handful of scripture of what Paul was saying and how people should conduct them. And where is he, where is he getting it from? Of course, he's getting it from the Torah. He's getting it from God's instructions, the mitzvah, the mitzvot, the commandments. Of course he is. But I want to tell you, you know, and, and to even add more to what I'm talking about, what Paul taught. So now we know Paul is teaching the Torah and he's telling how them, how they should act and the guidelines of how they should act is Torah. Now let's see what Paul actually says about the Torah. And I love what he says about the Torah. Listen, let's go. Acts 24, 14. This is Shaul. But I confess to you that according to the way which they call the sect. Now, Christianity wasn't called Christianity. Of course, it was called the way because of the first, the first, for the first two centuries, basically the, the, the followers of Yeshua, all Jews, 99.9% um, .9 of them. So it wasn't called Christianity. It was actually, let me just make sure I'm up. I'm still up and running. Yes, I am. Uh, it wasn't called Christianity. It was actually called the way. You know, you follow the way of, of that man, Yeshua, which we know to be the Mashiach. But I confess to you, I'm going to read that again. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call the sect, I worship the God of our fathers. Listen to what Shaul says. Believing everything laid down by God's law and written in the prophets. What is in the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures? You say the Old Testament, the law, the writings, and the prophets. He believes every word that was written down. Wow. That's Shaul. That, hey, listen, for all those who keep on saying that Paul taught to do away with it, please listen to what the word of God is saying. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm reading to you from the Bible. And I'm reading a, a very uh, contemporary translation, one that you'd probably find in most churches and most bookstores around the world. So uh, uh, it, this is so you would understand and comprehend it. Let's go to Romans 3.29. Oh, I love this. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Goyim, the Gentiles, the non-Jews? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since indeed it is one God who will justify, remember the word justify, the circumcised, which he's speaking of the Jews, by faith, and the uncircumcised, the Gentiles, which through their faith as well. Verse 31, key verse. 
But do we then nullify God's law, the Torah, by this faith, making it no effect, overthrowing it? And here's Shaul. I love his response. Certainly not. May it never be. God forbid. On the contrary, we establish, we uphold it, we live it out. Lech I am. Oh my goodness. Listen, what is so hard to understand what I just read? Come on, people. Let's take the pride out and let's put the humbleness in and let's understand and ask and pray for discernment from, from the Spirit of God. Come on. We uphold it. Shaul was saying, we uphold it. Romans 7, uh, 7 12. Therefore, oh, beautiful. Therefore, the law, God's Torah, is holy. Chodesh. Paul is saying God's Torah, the, the, the commandments are holy. And he says this, and each commandment is holy and just and good. Beautiful. Come on. Really? Look what he just said. Holy. And every commandment is holy, just, and good. <laughs> Don't you love it? I do. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. Well, look at this. Romans seven fourteen. We know that the law is spiritual. What? What? Come on. Come on. We know that the law, the Torah, the law of God is spiritual. Hey, Romans 7.14. I love it. But I am a creature of the flesh, having been sold unto slavery under the control of sin. So right then and there, he's saying that the law of God is spiritual, but his flesh is full of sin. That's why he has to stay focused on the law of God, because that will help him work, walk do, through his walk with, with, with God and uh, the Lord. Romans 6. Uh, one through two, it says this. Well, then, should we keep on sinning? This is beautiful. Should we keep on sinning so that God may show us more and more of his wonderful grace? I also have a teaching on grace. If you're confused what grace actually is, go to that on this page. Or of course not, Shaul responds. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Remember, what is sin? So let me read that again, Romans 6, 1 through 2. So, so far, everything I read from Romans is complete opposite of doing away with Torah. It's actually, we keep it, we uphold it, we live it. It's our guidelines. It's the way we show God love. I mean, it's everything, everything Shaul, everything that Shaul is saying is for the Torah. It's not against. So should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? For those of you who keep on breaking the Sabbath, one of the most important commandments, it's the fourth one. You know, listen, you're deceiving yourself if you say you're not sinning. Listen, I'm not saying you're sinning because I said, well, listen, we all sin. We all make mistakes, but we should not continue in it once we learn the truth. Okay? Baruch Hashem. First John 3, 4, what does it say? The person who sins is breaking God's commandments, God's law. For yes, yes. Sin is sin is living against God's commandments, God's law. Goodness gracious. Romans 7, 7. What then, wait, what then shall we say? The law is sin? By no means. If it, had, if it had been for the law, I would not know what sin is. I would not have known that covenant is against the law. It's against God. Thou shalt not covet. This is Paul. Like I said, Torah in, in English means instructions. It gives you the instructions of a holy life on how to love God as well. Well, a holy life is loving God. First two important commandments, not the only two, the two most important. Love God with all your heart, mind, spirit, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you love God with everything you have, what's going to happen, family, is you are going to listen to his word. And what was his word when they were ministering to it? It was the Torah, the writings, and the prophets. The law of God, the Torah, and the writings of the prophets. Anytime they spoke of the word in the New Testament, in the Brit Adesha, they were talking about the Hebrew scriptures. And to those who um, uh, are used to hearing it, the Old Testament. Okay, so how can it be? If they were teaching from the Old Testament throughout the New Testament, how can the Old Testament be obsolete? How can the law be obsolete? Absolutely not. Not every commandment applies to you. You're not a farmer. You don't live in Israel. Come on, men do what men, what it says for men. Women do what women, what it says for women. And we, we eat what God considers food. Come on, keep the holy days. Do everything unto God, like the Bible says. And I love this, and I love this, but 
I just want to throw these two scriptures in here and listen to this. And and this is just part of, of what I just read to you, but I, I want to throw an extra two in there. And I love this, the book of James and James is, it's actually Yaakov because the real name of James is Yaakov, but that's another, that's another teaching. Um, James 125, Yaakov 125. However, the person who continues to study God's perfect law, his Torah that made people free. What did I just read? Seek the truth and the truth shall let you free. Psalms 119, 140, Torah 142. The Torah is truth. The, uh, the definition of truth is God's Torah. Well, what does it say? In James 125, let me make sure that we are still running. Yes, we are. It says, however, the person who continues to study God's perfect Torah, perfect laws that make people free and who remains committed to them will be blessed. Isn't that funny that the Torah says, God says in his Torah and his word, that if you do this and follow my commandments, I will bless you right now. I will bless wherever you go from generation to generation, Le'olam va'ed forever and ever. So if you keep my word, you keep, and what the word was considered the Torah, if you keep God's instruction, he will bless you. So what is it saying in the New Testament, in the Buddha Adashah, in the book of James and Yaakov 125? However, the person who continues to study God's perfect Torah, God's perfect laws that make people free and who remains committed to them will be blessed. People like that merely listen and don't forget. They actually do God's laws. What? Listen, folks, I'm getting excited because this is stuff that you don't normally hear all the time, but probably, you know what? You don't hear it all because I got to tell you something. Historically, 99% of the church don't even have any clue. And, and I'm, I'm not just everybody in general don't have any clue of the historical foundation of why Paul wrote the book of Romans. Please, I, 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 I challenge all of you out there. Go do the history. Why did Paul actually write the book of Romans? Who is it really directed to? And why did he write it? When you find that, you'd be like, wow, I'm under a different, wow, that's different. You know, I, I mean, folks, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, it doesn't get any better than that. And over here on Ecclesiastics chapter 12, verse 13, it says this, having heard everything, I have reached this conclusion, fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. What? Ecclesiastics 12, 13. Having heard everything, I reached this conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. <laughs> Family, and, and please hear me on this. We are saved by grace, but we choose to walk out our salvation the way God the Father tells us to. And the only way... And the only place we can find our instructions is in God's Torah, his, 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 his laws, his commandments, his mitzvot. It's just as Yeshua was teaching and says, come on, keeping God's commandments is, is holy. And, and this is what, you should, listen, like I said, Yeshua said until heaven and earth, you know, he says, I didn't come in Matthew 5. I didn't come to do away with this. And as usual, I'm going to end with scripture, but I have some scripture here. I'm going to add on to this. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. Well, I, I want to tell you something. If Paul was teaching against the Torah, you know, um, I, I also have a teaching on the Bereans, who the Bereans were. But if you go to Acts 17, uh, verse 10 through 12, it says, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away uh, by night to Berea, where they arrived and went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, these Jews were more noble than the Thess uh, and Thessalonica. Now, listen, listen to what this is saying. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures. Now, what scriptures are they examining? The, the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, the Torah, the God's law, the writings and the prophets daily to see if things that were, they were saying are so. So you had the Bereans. I call them the Torah FBI. They were out there looking at scripture and trying to see if, if Paul and his disciples were preaching anything that was against the word of God and they, and they weren't because they received it with open arms and these Marines, these Jews, these were a sect of Jews that were, that the only thing they did was study God's Torah. Okay. So right then, and I mean, how much scripture do I need to read? I'm going to read all of it to you. No. <laughs> uh, and also I don't want to leave this out. Second Peter one twenty. And this is key. You know, I always talk about this with, with, with in our ministry. First, you must understand this. No prophecy in Scripture, and what Scripture are we talking about? 
to Tanakh is a matter of one's own interpretation. The Bible interprets itself. So if somebody comes along to you and says, well, it says this, but it actually means that. And you should read this book on this theologian, on this theologian, well, you know, this theological measure. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? Humble jumbo. Put that aside. Listen, the word of God should be sufficient enough because I'm going to tell you something. They didn't have these extra books. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to trust in God's word over a man's opinion. Okay. And like I said, I want to close it some with uh, some scripture. I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 10. And it says by the, by showing steadfast love for thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Oh my goodness. Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 10, but showing steadfast love to thousands of generations. This means forever and ever. Now, I didn't read this from the Hebrew. I actually read this from, the, I think it's uh, NRVSV version, uh, the New Revised Standard Version. I will show love to those who love me and keep my commandments. And 1 John 2, 3 through, uh, 1 John uh, 2, chapter 2, 3 through 6. By this we know, or excuse me, by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And whoever says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in such a person, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know we are in him. Whoever remains in him ought to walk like him. Come on. This, this, this uh, we're talking about here is, is the Messiah. Second uh, John six. And this is love that we walk according to God's commandments. This is the commandment that you've heard from the beginning. You shall walk in it. These commandments you've heard from the beginning. First John five, three, for this is the love of God. I sum it up that we keep his commandments for his commandments are not burdensome. So loving God is keeping his commandments. Oh my good. John, uh, John, you open 14, 21. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will reveal myself to him. Listen, whose commandments Yeshua said, I don't speak on my own authority. I only speak on the, the authority given to me by God. And these are not my teaching. These are not my commandments, but these are the commandments of the one who sent me. Come on, folks. We can't lie to ourselves. Look, John 15, 9 through, uh, John chapter 15, 9 through 10. Just as the father loved me, I also, uh, excuse me, just as the father loved me, I also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep the commandments, I re- you will remain in my love just as I have to keep the commandments to re- remain in my father's love and remain in his love, God's love. This is Yeshua saying that if you want me to love you still, you know, you got to keep God's commandments because for me to stay in God's love, I, I got to keep the commandments as well. You're not better than me. Come on. So if Yeshua has to do it, then right. Okay. Yeah. Follow, shadow, reflect. Baruch Hashem. John 12, 49 through 50. I don't speak on my own authority. I want you to yoke on John chapter 12, 49, 50. I don't speak on my own authority. The father who has sent sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commandments lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the father tells me to say. Wow. Right from Yeshua, right from the mouth of of Mashiach. Uh, John chapter 7, 16 to 17. And Yeshua answered them. My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me, God the father. Verse 17, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoa. So Yeshua says that if you know what the word is, that you know the fact that these are not my teachings, but they come from the father. Baruch Hashem. And last and surely never least Galatians chapter five. And I read this before. Now the simple practice of central natures are clearly evident that sexual morality and impurity and sensitivity, idolatry, sorcery, Hospitality, hostility, excuse me, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, um, uh, dissension, fractions, evil, enviness, drunkenness, riotous behavior. Listen, I could go on. This is Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21. If you, and it says here, and, and, and the end, it says here, I warn you as I did before, those who practice all these will never inherit the kingdom of God. So, and I had to read this one again in Galatians 5, that if you keep on breaking God's commandments, you will never, as Yeshua said, never enter into the kingdom of God if you don't succeed the righteousness of the prophets and and the Pharisees that were before you. Listen, folks, this is no joke. Um, I read all these commandments and I read all these scriptures to you to show you that Paul never done away with with God's uh, Torah, with God's law. First of all, he didn't have the authority to do so. 
Yeshua didn't have the authority to do so. He only done it whatever God told him to do it. So if Yeshua didn't have the authority, what makes Paul have the authority to do away? No, Paul is not Yeshua. I love Paul, but he's not the Messiah. Okay, and if you read his correctness clearly, you'll know that he's telling you what the Messiah told before, before, before uh, when Messiah was walking in, in, in Jerusalem. Folks, listen, we need to really take the pride out of our, out of our system. You know, you read, you know, listen, I had a meeting with, 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 with somebody this week and they were reading from a, a Bible that the interpretations were so off. It just, I felt sorry for them. And they were talking to me like I was a Jehovah witness. Okay. And listen, I'm not throwing stones at Jehovah witness, but come on, we need to get it right, folks. We need to get it right. And I looked at him. I said, really? So every time he said something, I said, well, show me where it says it. And he couldn't. And actually, I was showing him where it says it in his own Bible. And then I even asked him, what do the words mean? Do you know what these words mean in Greek or in Hebrew? And he didn't. But he believes whatever that word, whatever that translation says. Folks, translation, if you look at the publisher, translations of what they believe. So you really have to investigate what you're reading from what publisher, what version of the Bible you're reading. Listen, folks, do your homework and study. God is there and he will answer your prayers if you really want to know his truth. Baruch Hashem, let's pray. Baruch Hashem, Father, we come before your throne with the heart of thanksgiving, and I thank you for giving me another opportunity to share the truth of your word with the world. Father, I pray that you plant the seed of desire in every person out there listening to this message to not take my word for it, but to study and search the scriptures daily and take your word for it. May the truth set them free, and Father, may we come together as one. We're here, Father. I ask that you uh, bless this ministry as well, that we could reach more and more people every day and tell them the truth and help those in need. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Bashem Yeshua, Amen. Father, folks, we love you all. Thank you again for allowing me to come into your home wherever you are listening to this message. Listen, uh, and again, for those of you who want uh, more information about this ministry, you want to help support this ministry, we're just drop, listen, and those letters and emails are awesome. And the message, messages that you send are great. Please, if I haven't answered you, I will, I promise you, I will answer you uh, soon. I promise that. But keep on uh, sending them. Keep on coming. Uh, keep them coming. It's, it's awesome that we could connect from all over and, and especially in Kenya, Africa. Uh, I got a message. God bless you. We love you. Shabbat shalom to you out there. And keep up the good work, and we are with you in prayer. Um, but folks, please, love one another. Do something nice for somebody. Do something nice for somebody you don't even know. Open the door for somebody. You let somebody cut in front of you. Give somebody your spot. Be nice. Let, let, the, let the Word of God shine and reflect in your walk and your life. How does the Word become flesh? By living it. Baruch Hashem. Until next time, folks. May the right hand of God be upon your life. May His light shine on your path that you don't go astray. Until next time, God bless you. Shalom I love you all. God bless and see you next time. Shalom, shalom.